so I had they had this problem. They knew that um, there was a there was a problem of a NASA rocket going up, and this was a man program that uh, I was working in, not the NASA robot program, but the man program. So they, they're very worried in the man program that if the rocket blows up, of course, it kills everybody. So there's a bigger pucker factor there than if you're launching robots. You know, if a robot blows up, well, you lost the money, but nobody died. You know, you have to go build another robot and, you, and it costs you more money. But in the, the man program, you have, you know, half a dozen people on board. So you try real hard that that one doesn't blow up. So they were worried about what would happen if on launch, before the rocket got out of the atmosphere, it ran into a bird. See? I told you you'd like this. This is just a problem. And they had had this problem knocking around in NASA for, you know, 15 years or 20 years because it's, it's always been an issue. What happens if you run into a bird? Now, I know it sounds silly, but uh, here's, the, here's the problem. And they knew this, but they didn't know what to do about it. You see, uh, that rocket gets going very fast, very quickly. And if you hit, you know, if you hit a bird that weighs, say, four pounds, and your rocket is going at, you know, Mach 2, <laughs> it's just the same kinetics as far as the physics goes as if you had a rocket sitting still and a bird was flying at Mach 2 and hit the <laughs> rocket. You see, it's the same energy transfer. Well, a four-pound bird at Mach 2 does something like several million pounds of force, enough to make a rocket just disintegrate, just rip it to pieces, you see? So it sounds funny, the rocket hits the bird, you know, well, the bird bounces off, you know? But uh, that's not what happens. If you hit, if that's what happens in the first, you know, 10 seconds or so, the rocket hits the bird, the bird bounces off. You know, the velocities aren't that high. But very quickly, it's going very, very fast, such that if you do have an, a collision, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of pounds of force are generated during that collision. And it will rip off the, uh, rip right through the metal. It'll rip off fuel tanks. It'll rip through, wow. you know, uh, through the fuselage. It'll tear off the insulation so that later on it, it overheats and melts. So there's lots of things that'll happen. So it's a disaster. But they didn't know how to deal with it. They say, okay, well, what's the probability? So this was a problem. And again, it's a probability problem. What's the probability of us hitting a bird? And if so, what sort of damage? What's the probability that it's going to do serious damage? Well, of course, the probability of serious damage goes up with altitude because the higher the altitude, the faster the thing's going. Therefore, the seriousness of the collision gets worse as it goes up. Well, the good news is, is that the higher you go up, the fewer birds there are. But then the bad news is that there are some birds, and these are generally pretty good-sized birds, that fly real high. Matter of fact, there are birds that uh, migrate over top of Mount Everest every single year. Mount Everest is about 30,000 feet in the air, just under 30,000 feet. So now you have birds at 30,000 feet flying. And most people, when they hear that, they go, oh, that's impossible. 30,000 feet, there's no oxygen. It's like, uh, you know, 40 degrees below zero. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's just inhospitable. A bird, you know, nothing can live up there. But those birds have figured out, they've evolved a way to do that. And they go up that high, and they do fly. Now, not a lot of birds. You're not going to find, you know, lots of birds up there. But there are some. And at that point, uh, even way before that point, you know, the impact forces are, are totally catastrophic for the, you know, for the, uh, the rocket going up and for everybody in it. Everything, everything dies. You know, it's a, it's a big, big bang and nothing left but ash and cinders. So this is a real problem. And, uh, you know, so what birds are how high, when, where, and, um, you know, you had to figure out migrations, you know, what kind of birds that weigh how much go where, you have to find out how much damage a bird does and need to do the physics of the bird collision where the bird actually hits. What does it do? You know, how does it bend, break? You know, what do the bones do? How does it interact with the, you know, with the metal, with the uh, foam insulation? Um, all those things are done. Fortunately, up in Tullahoma, Tennessee, they have a facility up there that shoots 
chickens out of a cannon. There's a chicken cannon in Tullahoma. See, I thought you'd get a laugh out of this. And this chicken cannon blows chickens out at high velocity. <laughs> and what do you think they're aimed at? Rockets. <laughs> no, they're aimed at plexiglass jet canopies. <laughs> you see, it's a big problem, not only for civil aircraft. Birds take down civil aircraft every year. But it's a big problem for military aircraft because the way that the military guys win is by flying very low under radars. You know, you come up on on your adversary very fast if you're low and very fast. So they train to fly low and fast. Well, low is where the birds are. Fast is where the problem is with the collision with birds. So you see, they have this a very big problem with their tactics, which are successful tactics, and interacting with birds. So if there's somebody flying and he's only at 1,000 feet or 500 feet and he's going Mach 1 and he runs into a turkey vulture, you see his plane is going to be ripped to shreds. So they need to know, you know how they can build their engines, how can they make the fans on the intakes of their jets so that they can ingest birds and not rip up the engine. They have to build them out of very strong, you know, components and um, that sort of thing. So it's a matter of, you know, you can solve the problem most of the time if you know what the problem is. So we got some data from the chicken cannon about how things, you know, how chickens splat. And then you had to do the physics of chicken splatting of exactly how that energy is transferred from the bird to the object because it's all a matter of time. If you transfer that, if you deaccelerate that mass very, very quickly, you get a very high force. If you deaccelerate that mass more slowly, then you get a force that still has the same energy under the curve, but it's applied more slowly, and therefore it doesn't get as, you know, the peak force never gets as high. So it's a lot of fun. This is a very interesting <laughs> thing that, like that nobody had really gone into in detail. They had done some calculations, and I guess they finally got to the point. They said, we really like to know about this. And I was around, so I said, well, I'll do it. That sounds like fun. So I learned, how to, I learned a lot about birds and how much they weigh and where they fly and where the migration, migration routes are and uh, the densities in a flock, how they, you know, how they, uh, how they fly together, how, you know, how they spaced. And then you go through the probability of you launch a rocket. And if you launch it, you know, during uh, migration season, your probability's up. But if you don't, you know, your probability's down. If you, um, you know, do certain kinds of things, you can, you can uh, kind of have a, a, a radar with a, uh, a really high uh, frequency, a very short pulse width that can actually see the birds. So you can look for birds you know, in your vicinity. So there's countermeasures. There's things you can do if it's there. So the whole idea is to understand the problem well enough that you know how to minimize the probability, you know, of a catastrophe. And that's the, that's the thing. Well, the first problem is how big a catastrophe, you know, how big a problem is it? Is it like one in 10,000 that this will ever happen? Or is it one in, you know, a hundred that this will happen? Well, one in a hundred is unacceptable. You have a bunch of people on that rocket. You can't say, you know, one in a hundred, you know, we're going to blow up the people. With birds. You know, NASA won't go that, you know, go that low in their probability. So the first thing we want to know, what is the probability of hitting a bird? Which, of course, is time dependent, weather dependent, it's all sorts of things. You know, it's different at night than it is in the daytime. So there's lots of variables that uh, go into the problem. So that was one of the things I did at NASA. It wasn't the only thing I did, but that was one of the things I did at NASA. Probably more fun than any of the rest of them, just because it was so unusual. <laughs> but still, it was a very complex problem, and it was a serious problem. And uh, it, uh, it took me quite a while. <laughs>